<laughs> How's everybody doing today? Your Zoo Adventures team is here with you on this beautiful, beautiful Monday. You, today, your Zoo Adventures team is Steve's in front of the camera. Miss Chelsea is behind. Good morning, everybody. Nice to have you here with us today, Chelsea. And we are in a very special location. We are on Lemur Island. What? Yeah, it's so cool. That's why the mask is different. This is the mask that the vets prefer the keepers wear when they're on the island. So no clear mask today. And I apologize, sort of, but the vet says this is what you might wear on the island. That's what I have to wear on the island. I hope you understand why. And I'll mention that again a little bit later on. But yeah, we're on Lemur Island. So cool. And Keeper Jody is here. She's going to let the lemurs out. Everybody say hi to Keeper Jody down there. We're going to be meeting two red ruffed lemurs, a male and a female, George and Marie. Good job. George and Marie don't know that we're out here. Chelsea, are you a little excited? I'm very excited. I've never been out here before. Me either. I've been here 110 years. I haven't <laughs> been out here either. So that must be George. Red ruffed lemurs, one of the largest species of lemurs alive today. How cute. Come on, guys. How lovely is that? George and Marie. And we're going to learn a little bit more about them. Did you turn it back around? I did. I'm so proud of you. You wanted some, you wanted some camera time I really there? didn't. <laughs> I was trying to zoom in, but... That's so neat. The phone said no. So George and Marie are coming up. About the size of a house cat, they look like to me. And then Keeper, they're looking at Steve like, who is that big giant man? Okay, so this is our newest lemur. Can I come close to you? I sure can. All this right. is Marie. This she is, is a lot lighter in color than George, and mm -hmm. she's also a lot larger than George. Okay. But uh, with red rough lemurs, uh, typically the males and the females are about the same size. Okay. Difference, if I'm not mistaken, didn't you say that the females are the dominant in this they world? They are. They are matrilineal. They are what? Uh, matrilineal, which means the females are in charge. Oh, okay. Oh, look, at, look at George. I'm sorry. <gasps> I'm going to interrupt real quick. No, you have to interrupt. He is sunbathing right now. Hi. So this is our and that's first a real time. behavior. That's and he's not. That's not. Oops, sorry. Yeah. So that's what he does. Yeah. This is their first time coming out this morning, mm -hmm. and so they are doing like a sun worshiping, where it's like, oh, the sun feels amazing. They're solar powered. Absolutely. <laughs> They're solar powered. Well said, Chelsea. <laughs> Hi, Marie. So Marie she's is so very gentle. Food motivated. Food motivated. She likes the food, so she's she trainable, does. maybe. Absolutely. <laughs> that's so. so neat. She likes to eat. I have to say, I've never been this close to a red ruffed lemur before, so thank you so much. And I hope our digital guests are really appreciating you letting us come out onto the island itself. Hi, Marie. She's like, you're not so bad. But remember, she's like, I'm the boss. She is. That is so neat. Lemurs um, from Madagascar, right? They are. They are from Madagascar. It is an island off of Africa, which is a little bit larger than California. The but island is Madagascar is a little larger than California. Oh, yeah. she didn't like the broccoli. And she's like, I don't want the healthy things. I like the sweets. So she's, she's uh, after her own heart. <laughs> these guys are what's called frugivores, which means... Frugivores? You and your, I love these terms. Which means they mostly eat fruits. So whenever I try to sneak the broccoli, it's kind of like my mm. kids at home. My, I know my 10-year-old specifically, he really does not like his broccoli. <laughs> I tried to give it to him last night. No, not into it? Nope. That's funny. I'm going to go sneak down to Look George and see if George Maybe we follow? Him, but absolutely. I'm sure Marie? Marie will follow. We'll be back in a second, Marie. Unless you follow us. Hi, George. So how old is George? George is going to be 14 years old next month, actually. 14? He's going to be 14. Old or young for a lemur? Well, it's actually middle age. Middle age, okay. In the wild, they can live between... Um, Usually about 20 <laughs> years of age, 15 to 20. Okay, that's not bad. But under human care in zoos, typically about 25 years of age. I see. And I know that our guests would like to know, is this a breeding pair or are they a non-breeder? They are non-breeding. Okay, good, yes. good to hear. Good to hear. Marie's come down. Of course, because we have the food over here. Right, oh, of course. But you can see the size difference between the yeah, two. a little bit. She's very tall and lanky. Mm-hmm. 
And Marie is four years old. Oh, she's she's young. And she's showing you and she's her going sunbathing. To do a little sunbathing there too, uh, until the food came out. Nice <laughs> job. That is so neat. Um, the the island. I know that we've had some questions before. The the island itself is surrounded by water. Mm -hmm. Is that because lemurs aren't very fond of water? That is true. They that are makes... not swimmers, so this helps them stay on the island. I see. Okay, so. good. That's nice. Yeah. So even though they're on the even though they're on a huge island like Madagascar, <laughs> that's why they can't leave the island. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I've heard there's many, many species. I've heard 70, 80, 90 different types of lemurs all on Madagascar, yeah. right? They're all, the only place in the world you find any lemur. Absolutely, yeah. I've heard native home. that they're saying between 80 to 100 species on the island. 80 to 100, so. wow. And they range in size from little to big, or they all kind of the same? probably, gosh, about just a few inches all the way up to, these guys are the largest, one of the largest ones that are still living. Oh, are they? But they found fossils of another lemur that was found on Madagascar. Yeah about 350 pounds -uh. so huge 300 that's me it's like a size of a gorilla it's bigger than a little yeah. bit bigger than me, but <laughs> still it's about the size of a gorilla yeah that is so they're so gentle jo keeper jody they are they are but keep in mind though they do have very sharp teeth though so you don't want to make them angry ah i see i see i see and then they're a pair um if i'm not if I'm mistaken sadly george's original um uh let's say girlfriend let's say yep uh, habitat mate um, passed away is that right yeah she passed away this past fall um and so she he was singly housed for a few months and he did not handle that well he was very lonely so being singly housed okay not yeah. a good idea and unfortunately with covid it was really difficult to bring Oops. in a new individual uh-huh um but luckily we were able to find marie at the greensboro science center so the very greensboro close science by center. thanks guys that's awesome greensboro science center right and um they need to place her and so oh, we said you wow. know what that is a short little drive sure it is even during covid that's something that we could do nice Good deal. So we brought her down from Greensboro and look at those teeth. Can you get those teeth at all, Chelsea? I, think I was just so noticing, cute. especially on Marie, the teeth are mm -hmm. kind of coming down. Now, although gentle, still not something you want to have at your house. Absolutely not. These guys, I mean, these lemurs are a, a ridiculously, ridiculously cute. However, they are still wild animals. Um, and we actually have we have another group of lemurs here. We have ringtails and we have red ruffs, but we don't put the, we don't put them together uh, at this point. So yeah. that's another thing to think about. And realizing those really sharp teeth, you mentioned that they're frugivores, and I bet you've seen those teeth. Our digital friends, you can see those teeth shining out there. They're made to cut through the rinds of the toughest fruits. So they, although gentle, it might appear taking out of Jody's hands. Remember, Jody's been working with them for a long time, and they're used to that kind of situation. They are not domesticated at all, digital guests. So not an animal you want to have as a pet. And look at me. I've got to be dressed up in my mask. I always have to wear it. Jody always has to wear it. She has to come out in gloves. Um, the mask gets thrown away. I've got to get new masks. I've got to kind of watch, watch my clothing. I don't want to get these guys up on me. If they do, I've got to change my clothes. I can't cuddle with them. Those teeth, the fact that I've got to wear gloves. I don't have a face for them to see not a good pet as a matter of fact digital friends dom domestics are the way to go you told me chelsea you have a couple pets what do you have i do i have a dog a cat and a rabbit a dog a cat and an all domestic yes so nothing exotic there um and think about that idea so much work has to go in when you have a, a pet even like my snake i have a, a ball python that was born under human care um there's a lot I had to learn before I went in there. So, so much research. And then legalities and certificates and permits that have to go in. It's just, it's just let, let the professionals do it and come enjoy them when you can. So one thing about lemurs, Steve, yep. even though you see them oftentimes in zoos, sometimes even in films and whatnot, right. these guys are critically endangered, meaning there are very few Great left point. in the wild. Great point. Um, and a lot of times whenever you see them in films or see them like even in like your local AZA zoo that you don't necessarily think, oh wait, they're critically endangered. That's an awesome point. But um, these guys are kind of like a life raft right now where for their wild <laughs> counterparts, right. um, you know, there's, we don't breed here, but a lot of the AZA institutions do breed. Yep. Um, so there's something really important to think about. Another reason why they don't make good pets is exactly. they are critically endangered. And we can start ticking those all off. You said earlier, they're matrilineal, matriarchal. You said a mm -hmm. fancy word, matrilineal. Is that what yep. you said? Uh -huh. So they're female dominated. They've got a female boss in the situation 
And they need more than one. They do, they and you do. You can't just have a single animal. I mean, just the few months that George was by himself, I mean, he did not do well. They are very social animals. Right. So right, something right. else about lemurs too, why they wouldn't make good pets, sure. is they're stinky. Are they really? Oh, they're so stinky. And not just uh, red ruff lemurs, but all lemurs have scent glands. Mm -hmm. And they do this as a way to communicate with each other. The ringtail right. lemurs in particular, they can be really stinky and they do something called stink fighting. I forgot about that. Where they will rub their scent glands on their tail and whenever they're fighting with a rival male, they'll fling their tail and their scent at the That's other right. lemur. Could you imagine that in your own no. house? Man. No. So no, they do not. Still kind of, they're still trying to establish who they are in, the, in, that, in that setting, even at your own home. Absolutely. So yes, yeah, so many reasons. So digital friends, I realize that they're cute and I'm not going to stand here and say they're not. It, but. As far as a pet goes, there's so many other better choices. So please, please, please consider that when you're considering having a pet of some sort. Do your research, even on dogs and cats, even on a domestic rabbit. Make sure you're doing your research when you're out and about. And I appreciate the fact that they're all critically endangered. And all 80 to 100 species are critically endangered. They are, absolutely. And we don't know exactly how many there are because there's new lemurs being discovered quite often. Um, as Jody mentioned, the smallest one is tiny. It may be only a few inches long. So they can hide out in the jungles of Madagascar very, very well. A little green bean. Nope. Again, very <laughs> much like my 10-year-old son, you right. know? Oh, 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 oh. How about you, George? Frugivorish. I do like that word. <laughs> I think he's got the, 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 yeah, the he juice, just, the grape yeah, juice just, and the things off her Man, finger. George. So Marie took a green bean. That's why, well, you know, hey, every once in a while you got to diversify a little bit. See, I'm going to mix the little dried cranberry with broccoli. Look Ooh, at that. that was sneaky. Uh -huh. You must be a mom. Uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. work. Marie? Nope. 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 Marie's like, I know what's there. I know what's going on here. Oh, there we go. Um, I think one of the coolest facts about lemurs, the one that I've been able to share with folks, is the fact they have a tooth comb mm -hmm. a tooth comb chelsea you have a tooth comb i i hope not no you don't have a tooth comb. <laughs> their bottom teeth are really long and skinny and very close together that's about the best i got so long and skinny and close together but why jody well like we said these guys are very social individuals okay and one way they do socialize is grooming oh really and so oftentimes they will use their little tooth comb and groom either themselves or their friend. Oh, nice. And so they okay, so it's a way hair. to say hello. Exactly. I mean, just look at their beautiful lush coat it of hair. It's gorgeous. So they have to groom all the time to look that good. Nice. So digital friends, real quick, we're on the Lemur Island here at the North Carolina Zoo. That's Marie, I believe. It is Marie. Good nice. job, Steve. So that's Marie. And then George just left us for a little bit um, to go over. They were doing some sunbathing a second ago. And talking about some amazing animals are the red ruffed lemurs. Are they are lemurs? They like trees, or are they on the ground? These guys, in particular, are one of the most arboreal, meaning they like to hang out in trees. Oh, really? Species of lemurs. Yes. It's like another green bean. Good job, Marie. That's because we're getting down to the nitty gritty so here. So she knows. <laughs> like, all right. And again, she loves food. But yeah, these guys will spend most all their time up in the oh, high tree like tops. To you dropped it, Marie. And one thing that's really cool about red ruff lemurs, too, is they're one of the only species of primates that make nests. They build nests. And um, whenever they give birth, typically their typical litter size is about three individuals all the way up to six. Wow. And they keep their babies in nests up in the trees. That is so neat. Lemur, they're just so cool and they're so unique. No, we're not dancing, guys. Okay, not doing the. What, I'm going to leave you for just a moment. The move it, move it. You are. I'm going to set up what's called enrichment, <gasps> and you can tell the guests a little Our bit about enrichment. Our digital friends wow, know about enrichment. I know they know about enrichment. Digital yeah, friends. Just stay right here. Do you remember enrichment? That stuff that we're able to provide, that the keepers provide for the animals, in order to challenge them mentally, to challenge them physically to do behaviors that they're trying to encourage. Sometimes a natural type of behavior is what they're looking for. So Jody's gonna go off, she's gonna grab something and be able to bring it back out. What do you think some things that enrichment wise you might provide for lemurs? What do you think they might provide? Sound? <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea, what do you think they might provide for enrichment for a lemur? I mean, I think right what you're standing in front of this? is a great yep. enrichment, but it's a, kind of a habitat enrichment. And this, we talked about they this, have right? All the time. We talked about the habitat. It's here, all, it's built in. Um, 
but it'll be interesting to see. I know we've seen puzzle feeders before. We've seen ice before. Um, we've seen things they have to jump up for to grab. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what Jody's going to put out for them. Have you guys been having a good time? I should tell you one thing real quick. Um, Zoo Adventures is on Mondays and Wednesdays, right? Starting in April, we're going to be on Wednesdays. We're going to be airing on Wednesdays starting in April. No more Mondays. The zoo, fingers crossed, is getting to where we're going to be opening soon. Opening up bigger and more. So that means that me, and Chelsea, Leslie are going to be busy in the park providing our guests that kind of experience as well. But we're not going away. You guys, y'all, have been so awesome about being here and being present that we are not doing away with the zoo adventures at all. But we're going to be doing down to one a week. And that'll be Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. Okay, so do me a favor. Starting in April, can you share that news with people who are kind of tuning in? Where were you on Mondays? Oh, I didn't see you. Let them know that we're moving to Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. But we'll be here next Monday. That starts in April. That we move to Wednesdays at 10. We're getting Same a lot time. Of thumbs ups and everything in the chat. So awesome. So, yeah, it's been an amazing adventure. It's been an amazing journey. And we don't want it to go away either. But we do have to scale back just a little bit. And I hope you understand. You guys have been so amazing throughout this entire journey. And we appreciate all that time you spent with us as well. So I don't mean to interrupt. Steve. No, I think you're ready. No, no. But take a look at George over there sunbathing. Oh, you are kidding look me. Look at him. He's just like, look at me, Marie. Look at how good I look. That is ridiculously cute. <laughs> George. <laughs> Digital guest, how about a heart or a, or a thumb up or something? Give me a wow. That is so cool. And again, we're here on Lemur Island. We are so lucky to be out on Lemur Island with George Marie and Keeper Jody. We can't thank them enough for letting us come out to share the lemurs with you. We've done it once before, and actually Keeper Jody was with us before. Um, but to be able to come out on the island, oh my goodness. What a unique experience. What an exciting day. Chelsea's like, no, nah, it's old hat. I don't, I don't need to do this. She almost said, no, nah, give it to somebody else. Right, Chelsea? I, I don't think so. I was like, Steve, make sure that I'm there because <laughs> this is super cool and something that I wouldn't normally be able to do. No, me either, Chelsea. Me either. So it looks like they're just enjoying the sun. They are. And Marie's enjoying the sun a little bit now, too. It. Is that? Is that what? She, look, look who's here. Look who's here. Hi. Educator Leslie is here. Educator Leslie, we're on Lemur Island. Did you know that? I can see. You might not be able to hear. She said, I can see. I can see. <laughs> now you can hear her. <laughs> so we've had a great day today, Leslie. Yeah? We've been on the island with the Red Ruff Lemurs. We've met George and Marie. Okay. Um, Jody was kind enough to feed them right there on the rock. Oh, so our our guests got to see everybody right up front and close and personal. They've been sunbathing. Have you seen that? Well, we did learn they don't make good pets. Um, they are, they need to be together with more than one animal. Okay. Um, they are, a, they're female dominated, so you got to make sure you're aware, aware of that when you bring them in. If you were to do that at the zoo, you got to be aware of those things. And Keeper Jody did tell us that they're all, all species are critically endangered. So not an animal we need to have in homes, we need to have them in places that can really monitor that population. I also heard some of them have stink bites. She told us that. That is so cool. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to have an animal that has a stink bite. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie's saying she wouldn't want to be with an animal that has a stink bite. Yeah, they rub their tail in their glands and they wave their tail, their stinky tail. That is so cool. Well, it's good to see you. Who's with you today? This is Kate. Hi, Kate. It's nice Hi. to see you too. We say, hi, Kate. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. We're trying to get the lemurs. Jody brought in Richmond, so we're going to see if the key... They're, if the... they're busy sunbathing. <laughs> I mean, I don't... I mean, you, should, you probably can't see George, but, I mean, he is laid out right now. We, we're going to walk around and see if we can find him. You might be able to see him from the other side. You might have at least see a hand sticking up. And really, if you want to go down there with the camera, you can get a close-up. It doesn't look like he's really going to be moving. Maybe that way over there? Yeah, you can go that way and then go this way. And I'm going to stay here. They are so much fun. What an amazing, amazing day. 
and no digital I have never been able to do this. And working with Keeper Jody, working with Curator Ireland, Curator Jen, to set this up has been an amazing experience. So thanks to Keeper Jody, Curator Jen Ireland as well. They don't look that interesting. They don't look that interesting. <laughs> but, but, let's, let me flip this around. The enrichment now becomes the space, becomes the habitat. Absolutely. And the sun, since this habitat enables them to do that, the habitat itself is enriching. It absolutely is. Having that natural sunlight is critical for these guys. So you can tell that they're really it. And, and, they're, and they didn't react to, to Chelsea or me at all. Not at all, no. Nope, they were like, whatevs. <laughs> whatevs. You guys have been... The key, our keeper friends have been very, they've been, we've built up a relationship, we've built up trust with them. So if, if our keeper friends are bringing these people on the island, they can't be all bad. Absolutely. Maybe a little bad, but Absolutely. not all bad. <laughs> and we work with our vet team too, where sometimes we'll bring out JB. I'm sure you've met JB. We have met JB. You know, um, he talks a lot. <laughs> he does. He, was, he, did, he did one of the episodes and man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he oftentimes comes out here to do any kind of physical uh, checkup on these guys, make sure everything is so he can come on the island and do that? He can that. come on the island. Um, like I said, Marie loves food, especially her, and so she'll do anything for a raisin. Anything for a raisin. So. Chelsea, what about you? Anything for a raisin with you, Chelsea? You know, I, I like raisins, but I don't know that I'd do anything for them. <laughs> well said. That'll work. But they are. They're not interested at all in the food you brought out they for them. They are not. Look at that. We'll show them. We'll at least show them that you did actually bring food. We'll, I we'll know. show our digital friends. Well, hopefully they'll come over to it. They'll get hungry. <laughs> especially Marie. Can you tell us a little tiny, even though they're not out, because they're kind of here and we got a beautiful shot of these two, can you tell us a little bit about the ringtails? Absolutely. We have three ringtail lemurs. We have one male and two females here on park. Yep. Uh, we used to house them together, um, but suddenly George decided he wasn't crazy about them. You know what? That's okay. And they stopped getting along. And once we brought Marie in, she wasn't crazy about the ringtail lemurs either. Okay. Um, so we are working to get them together, but we're just doing very slow introductions. Um, yeah. I'm not super confident that we'll be able to get them <laughs> back together. So right now what we do is we rotate the lemur species um, okay. on habitat each day. Nice. So. so everybody has a chance to come out Absolutely. and be part of the space. And I've seen the inside space. There's plenty of large, a lot of space inside. Sure is. A lot of levels, a lot of places they can jump on, hold on, climb on. They get a lot of space for them to, to interact with when they're inside. Yep. Um, and we actually did an episode on the elephant barn and talked about how the in, the back, those spaces are also really important. Those kind of back, um, there's a thousand words we use for them, holding spaces, back bedrooms, night quarters, um, are just as important in the care of these guys. And it was amazing to see the elephant barn and to walk in with you all here and see that too was really cool to see everything that you guys have put in place. Uh, the keepers have put in place for the lemurs under their care. Absolutely. In fact, that's their safe space. Um, every nice. night they know that they want to go inside, that they know there aren't any predators or anything inside, oh, and they're just nice and comfortable. I love that. In fact, that's where we initially did the introductions with Marie oh, really? and George. Yeah, when inside. we brought her in, Interesting. when we brought her from the Greensboro Science Center, since they are a female dominated species, mm -hmm. we started introductions in our quarantine space, which is down okay. at the vet hospital. Right, right, right. Um, we thought that we would start there. That makes sense. Down there. Well, George yep. was so scared of Marie, he just really? hid from her the entire time. No kidding. So things weren't going well there. Um, so new animal, new space, maybe? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, so we ended up bringing both of them back to Lemur Island, down in their holding space. Right. And we resumed introductions there, and it went super smooth. No kidding. Congratulations. George was a lot more comfortable because he likes his be back bedrooms that and whatnot. So. so you have to know your animals, right? And you've got to learn. And even if you've been working with George for a long time, it was something one more thing you needed to learn from George. And he showed you through behavior that, hey, let's go back home. Absolutely. Nice. Awesome. Well, Chelsea, what do you say, Chelsea, what do you say we move towards the, um, the enrichment over here? And let's see what the gleamers will do, even though it looks like George is out. George's like, no. I'll see if I can persuade Marie to come at least. But... <laughs> it's up to them. And our digital friends know that. They know that the, that the animals dictate what we get to do from time to time. Remember, I want to remind you, if you're, worried, if you're kind of concerned about the mask, this is the mask that our vets ask people to wear when they come on the island. So I, don't have, I still wear the, 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 the clear mask, but when we're out here, the vets have asked us to do this. So this is what we're going to be looking. This is why I have this mask on and not the clear mask. 
I know you guys have been very, very positive, and thank you so much for all the feedback about the clear masks, but it's all about animal safety, and the vets ask us to do this, so that's why the mask is a little bit different today. Gloves, again, keep that's part of the protocol. So there's no touching. There's no interacting along those lines. The lemurs might touch. You might have seen them grabbing at Jody's hand, but Jody's not going to the lemurs. So no touching. Still another reason, just not a good idea for a pet. Just not a good idea for a pet. So stick with your domestics. As Chelsea said, she has a dog, a cat, and a rabbit. I have a snake that was born under human care. So stick with those kind of animals, not an animal that's in a critically endangered species. We don't need that. <laughs> She's working, trying to get somebody up to say hi. You guys had a good day today? Chelsea has had a good day today. I've had a very good day today, and it's only, what, 10, almost 10.30? Is it almost 10.30? How much fun. This, Jody's working hard to bring him up, so we'll get one more view if before we... George up here, then Marie will follow. Oh, I Marie's see. Marie's still a little bit nervous on the island by herself. So wherever George goes, she'll go. I see. So if so you guys George didn't hear that right quick, she's, Jody said that Marie's still a little nervous on the island. It's still kind of a new home, right? So if you imagine going to a new space... So moving George around a little bit. George. Digital friends, are you enjoying this? Comp are you enjoying meeting the lemurs like this? I know I am. And it's kind of good that we couldn't meet the red ring, the ringtails today, because maybe we'll have to come out and do the ringtails again. Chelsea, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's a must. <laughs> we, we won't tell Jody that yet. <laughs> George. Hi, George. George. <laughs> Hi, George. Here comes Marie. See, where George goes, Marie will That's go. true, yeah. yeah you found your bucket. There's nothing in the bucket, I don't think. You've got to come up here, Marie. There's all kinds of cool stuff. Jody and the team put some really neat stuff together for you. There's some cool enrichment up here. Find it. Can you find the enrichment? She's interested in the Muppet a little bit. You don't get the Muppet. you like me. Oh, there you go. George found the enrichment. And watch Marie, she's going to go across our little booby-trapped bridge here. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> so George dropped stuff, going to come down and find it now. Look at that balance. And you did say they're arboreal. So being mm -hmm. in the tree, being on those uh, moving tree limbs, the bridge here that you guys have, that you guys have created, yeah. really neat. Yeah, absolutely. All of this is really important. The enrichment we offer them. Uh, we try to promote naturalistic behaviors. Right, right, right. So they would be doing this in the wild. They would be balancing off the tree branches, trying to pick fruit and right. any kind of vegetation. So, And the enrichment in oh, the space. Oh, oh, look at her. Look at that. <laughs> I want to come here. Hang on. But you can Digital see the friends. Come on. Thumbs up on that one, right? How cool is that? Look at the strength. Yeah, I was just going to say yeah, thank I you. I mean, Jody. can you imagine, Steve, no. us eating like this? No. Like hanging upside down, trying <laughs> to get our food out? It's tough enough. People do, want to eat pizza with a knife and fork. I don't understand right? that either. But <laughs> <laughs> you guys have, y'all do some really cool work, Keeper Jody, keeping these animals active, keeping them interactive, yep. and providing the, the amazing level of care that you do. So interesting. So what should our guests know about lemurs that we haven't mentioned yet? Well, other than they're super cool stuff. Well, they are super cool. Man. I like the female dominated. That's really neat. That's unique. I love the I love the frugivore, the fruit diet. Sharp teeth. I know a fun fact, Steve. What you got? Did you know that these are one of the largest pollinators? Wait, 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 wait. Lemurs? No, honeybees are pollinators. Yeah, baby. exactly. But red ruffed lemurs are pollinators as well. Really? How, how, is, how are these guys pollinators? What you guys need to do at home is Google images of red ruffed lemurs mm -hmm. and flowers. Red ruffed lemurs and you flowers. You will see pictures of lemurs with pollen all over their little faces oh, because no they kidding. will oftentimes eat the nectar out of flowers. Okay. And while they're doing that, they're pollinating other flowers. Nice. Just like the honeybee. Exactly. Wow. Just a little, a little bit larger. Just a little bit larger. So neat. And what about, I'm going to make a little, assumption, a little, assessment, a little um, assumption here in that they can, I know it's 1030 for our digital friends. They're going to be a little bit put off by this one, but that's okay. They'll, it's a learning moment. Okay. 
They poop seeds? They do. They do they poop do. seeds? They do. Uh-huh. They poop seeds. How cool is that, right? Right. Digital friends, they poop seeds. Yes. I won't say it again. Now that Just is for you. <laughs> one reason why they are so important, especially with the way the, they're losing their forests in yes. Madagascar. I was going to say that's so. one of the biggest challenges with them is the fact that their habitat, their forests are going away. Mm -hmm. um, and if you lose an animal like the lemur, as Jody just mentioned, pollination ha stops happening, and then seed dispersal also stops happening. So it's not just that we're losing the trees. <laughs> see George over there. How do you guys get any work done, Jody? I know, right? They're amazing. <laughs> so losing an animal like this, and you can, you, and that's a broad brush. You lose any animal that's involved in pollination and seed dispersal, then the plants are suffering as well in the native world. Now, that's one Big thing. Challenges. I mean, folks at home, Steve, I mean, they can work on, like, you know, different conservations, right. things like that. Jody, wait, Jody. They, oh, Upside what's down. going on over I'm there? Sorry. What's going on? Really? That was an important step, too, but that was <laughs> crazy. I'm sorry, go ahead. But it's really important to know where your products come from. It is. Um, as far as, like, you know, if you want new hardwood floors in your house, um, things yeah, well like said. that to make sure that you get sustainable wood. Yep. Um, and then also you can make a pollinator garden in your backyard. We're going to be actually doing that. Um, believe it or not, Earth Day is coming in April. <laughs> Um, and we're going to be doing some pollination garden stuff in April Perfect. with our awesome. so they can see a little bit more, a little bit more what they can do and where to find some of those resources. Well, Jay, we can stay here all day, and Chelsea is going to be mad at me when I say I think we should begin to wrap up. No, Chelsea. Steve. I think I think we have to. We've got other things to do today. But I don't want to do other things. I want to stay you here. You want to stay here on the island? Yes. Jody, can we just leave Chelsea here? Oh, sure. I'm sure they would love that. <laughs> I'm sure. But you've got to sit and you've got to be swarmed by, by, by red ref lemurs. Are you sure you can handle that? That sounds like the opposite of a problem. <laughs> well, that's awesome. <laughs> well said, Chelsea. All right, digital friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, in April, Zoo Adventures going to Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. We'll be dropping the Monday segments because as the zoo is opening up, getting more and more guests in, we need to get back to whatever that new normal is. Um, so Chelsea and Leslie will be doing more and more school programs. I hope to be out in the park doing some more. But this is not going away. You all and us have been having so much fun with it that we will be keeping Zoo Adventures. It's just be going to Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. And again, if you can help kind of spread that word a little bit, especially into April, I would appreciate your help very, very much. All right, Jody, we're going to sign off. Thank you again, digital friends. We'll see you soon. The zoo is open. Timed tickets. Make those reservations. We might be seeing a little bit of an increase in the numbers here one of these days soon. But right now we're at 3,000. That's why the timed tickets are so important. And just like I'm wearing, Chelsea, Jody, you saw Leslie and Kate earlier, you're asking you to still wear masks for the safety of our guests, safety of staff, and the animals under our care. Y'all be good. We'll see you again soon. Bye.